Good afternoon, it's me, Logan Albright, back again with another book review for your viewing pleasure. And today I've got a fun one. It's Agatha Christie's Death on the Nile, soon to be a major motion picture. And because it's soon to be a major motion picture, I thought I'd read it before the movie comes out. This is another book in the Hercule Poirot series in which the famous Belgian detective has to solve a crime. It takes place and was written after The Murder on the Orient Express, which is the other Agatha Christie book I've reviewed on this channel. Go check it out. And I like it better than Murder on the Orient Express. I think it's a better book overall. The setting is more exotic. The characters are more well fleshed out. It's the finest of British imperialism, where you have a bunch of Englishmen happily holidaying off in Egypt for a change of pace back when people had the time and money to do such things and marveling at the quaint locals and their native ways. Um, if you're offended by that sort of thing, these are probably not the books for you, but I think it's got a certain charm in the type of era that it was written in. And it certainly captures that kind of um, wonder of, of foreignness that the British had in the late 19th and the early 20th centuries, back before the empires were all busted up. Murder on the Orient Express was very procedural, shall I say. Uh, after the murder happens, there's a very, you know, direct and, um, kind of formulaic laying out of all the evidence. They interview each person individually, all the evidence is laid out, and Poirot comes to a conclusion. And to a certain extent, this book does it as well, but it doesn't feel quite so awkward and stilted. Um, it, the narrative flows more naturally, more like a novel than in the other one, which was sort of like a puzzle book, you know? Uh, she lays out all the pieces and invites you to solve the puzzle. This one, the, the story is a little bit more organic and flows a little bit better. I found the characters all engaging. I liked all of them. I thought they were all interesting. They all come from different places. Um, Poro is always a delight. He's very wise. He's got a lot of words of wisdom that are applicable even today, and it's nice to hear uh, his perspective on life. She also spends a long time building up to the murder. It doesn't happen right away. It's, it's almost halfway through the book before the murder actually happens. So you have plenty of a chance to learn about all the characters and learn about the situation and try to figure out what's going on before anything happens. And I like that. I like that build up. I thought that was good. The only place where I will say it is a little bit weaker than Murder on the Orient Express is I think that the mystery is uh, easy to work out and easier to figure out what's going on than in that one but that doesn't really bother me I'm not really trying to figure these books out ahead of time I'm along for the ride and enjoying them and so I think it's better in that regard I like these sort of mystery books they're fun they're fast they're easy to read you can get through them in a couple of sittings they may not contain the deepest most philosophical problems in the world but when you want something light and easy they're a great way to pass the time, especially as a snack in between heavier uh, works. I'm often in the middle of, you know, 10 or 15 books at a time, and some of them are really thick and really dense and hard to get through, and it's nice to take a break and read a little Agatha Christie. It's always a delight. She's just um, such a master of this genre. She really puts her together her stories very carefully. There's never any plot holes. I always think there's going to be plot holes at the end. I'm like, well, what about this one thing? She forgot about this, and it's always tied up very nicely. I think she was excellent at that sort of thing. Poirot is a great detective. He has a very different flavor than like Sherlock Holmes or like the, the pulp detectives of the 1930s. He's got his own kind of charm and wit and he always is sort of dragged into these cases against his will. He's just trying to vacation and uh, relax and have a good time and inevitably wherever he goes some sort of murder happens and he has to solve it but he never wants to. So it's the reluctant detective. I think that's sort of a fun uh, device. It reminds me a little bit of the Father Brown stories by G.K. Chesterton in which the, de the detective is also a priest and you get a little bit of a similar vibe that the kind of wisdom and reserve and not really wanting to get involved but having to out of a sense of duty and that's what I like about Poirot. So that's pretty much all I have to say about Death on the Nile. I'll be looking forward to watching the movie when it comes out, and I'll be looking forward to reading more wonderful Agatha Christie books. On the back here, they have the list of the Poirot mysteries, and as you can see, there are many of them, and I haven't read very many of them, so it'll be fun to dig into some more of those. In the meantime, I've got many other books on my to-read list that I'm partway through, that I'm most of the way through, uh, that I haven't started yet. I will get through them as soon as I can, and I'll check back with you with more reviews. Thanks for watching. I've been Logan Albright, and I'll catch you next time.